proposition uh, of uh, Amazon's infrastructure services. So their availability zones uh, with data storage. Uh, we will mirror data between availability zones for maximum availability and data durability, but we do not move data between regions. So data that you place in our European uh, availability zones will not be mirrored over to the uh, US, for example. That's very important for records uh, such as health records, financial records, and data of that nature uh, that can't leave the EU. So the provider there of what we will do with your data. Uh, we have a pretty broad range of people um, using EC2, uh, getting up and running with it. Uh, the Guardian uh, use uh, EC2 and S3 uh, to power their uh, iPhone and mobile apps and also their open data platform. Uh, Playfish is a social media gaming site. Um, they're built 100% on, uh, on EC2 and S3. Uh, they do a lot of content distribution. They're very, very high scale, uh, recently bought by Electronic Arts. Uh, Litmus for uh, browser testing. Eli Lilly uh, works for a pharmaceutical company, um, put a lot of their data in S3 and do a lot of performance computing uh, on EC2. Uh, they also um, did a great case study uh, internally uh, where they monitored uh, how many of their, their system administrators and their system teams in general um, worked with the cloud and what value they were adding. So they know noticed that around, and we noticed this a lot too, they noticed that around 70% of their system team time was spent maintaining uh, the systems, maintaining the drives, fixing the servers, and all the rest of it. Um, and only 30% of their time was spent really adding business value. Uh, they moved up onto EC2. Uh, they built a very, very simple uh, web front end, which allowed uh, teams across the organization to provision the services that they needed as and when they needed them. So this covered everything from wikis uh, or um, content management systems. Uh, teams could just go in, type in their internal cost code and provisions of the servers that they needed. What Lily saw was, was that this 70-30 split of their time spent uh, completely swapped over. So their teams moved from spending just 30% adding business value to 70% adding business value. And that's a huge jump. And that was, of course, associated with um, the reduction in cost for their data center suite. So the cloud is, is, is really perfect for uh, development and testing, as I talked about. Uh, so being able to move along the typical uh, development uh, uh, life cycle uh, from development, testing, QA, staging releases, uh, and ultimately production deployment. Um, because it allows you to uh, ring fence development uh, with each of these individual servers. Uh, it also allows you to provide uh, environmental separation, uh, but also environmental consistency between development and test environment. So you can make sure that your test environment is the same as your staging environment in terms of the versions of the servers you're running and the versions of the, the operating system, so that you can really ensure that testing happens on the same scale and at the same uh, in, in the same environment as production, but without a lot of the production tests. As I mentioned earlier, of course, it's much easier to move into production too, because you can just scale your service. Uh, if it's architected correctly, you can scale it up uh, and move directly uh, to production right there on EC2. So it's great to support the full development lifecycle uh, for new services and products. Um, we also offer some slightly higher level services. Uh, so we offer a managed MySQL database uh, in a service called the RDS, the Relational Database Service. And this allows you to very quickly, uh, and again, on demand, provision new MySQL servers. So again, configuring, maintaining, updating MySQL servers, typically not something that development teams uh, or large systems teams really want to spend much time with. Uh, using a service like a relational database service, um, you can allow Amazon to take care of the management, the patching of the service. Uh, we also have options for high availability, so we'll set up replicas for you, uh, both in terms of failover replicas, but also read replicas to increase the performance of your of your architecture. Uh, it's an excellent service. Uh, for uh, business metrics and uh, other high performance services, we also offer Hadoop as a service. Uh, so we have a service called Elastic MapReduce, which allows you to take uh, spin up a, uh, a large, uh, as large as you want, Hadoop cluster uh, to run your MapReduce tasks uh, up on EC2 very popular for advertising, uh, 
uh, analyzing click through screens, social graphs, scientific computing, technical computing, all of that sort of thing. Again, all available on demand as and when you need it. And you know, you might not need it uh, to start with, but as your business grows, as you become more comfortable using EC2, uh, it's nice to have these services there for when you need them. Uh, we also have monitoring and automation tools, uh, so you can collect metrics such as network, uh, uh, CPU utilization, uh, again, with a language agnostic API. You can plug that straight into your existing monitoring uh, dashboards and solutions. And again, you can automate um, the launching of new servers and the maintenance of new servers as well. We also have tools for uh, managing auto-scaling. Uh, so you can use the metrics uh, that come from, from EC2. Uh, you can monitor those yourself, but they also plug into an auto-scaling system. And you can set thresholds on that to say, when my ad hoc collection of EC2 servers reaches 80% utilization, add more servers into, into the network uh, and soak up that additional com uh, capacity and demand. Uh, and this means that you don't have to keep such tight reins and such a close watch uh, on your infrastructure. Stop you having to get out of, through, out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, to uh, see a spike uh, from Singapore, for example. So very powerful tools, all available as and when you need them um, to really help move from early development, early prototypes into full-scale, monitored, managed production deployment. Uh, um, in terms of pricing, uh, I think at the beginning of the month, we announced that we are introducing a free tier, uh, which is now available. Uh, so this is available for all new customers that signed up, I think, from the 22nd of October. Um, and this gives you uh, an excellent opportunity just, just to kick the tires of EC2. Uh, we're giving you um, 750 hours of EC2 uh, compute time. That's enough to run a micro instance uh, for a full year. Uh, you can also have a couple of gigabytes of storage, a couple of big gigabytes of network effect storage, uh, just to get a feel for how to use these services uh, for free. Uh, it's really easy to get up and running, really easy to get started. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, aws.amazon.com, uh, click the button up here in the top right hand corner, uh, and you just sign up. Uh, if you've already got an Amazon account, uh, you can use that to sign in, as long as it's got a credit card attached. Uh, sign in, get signed up, uh, and then you're good to go. Beyond that, we have a, a friendly user um, console. It's a web-based console for a lot of our services. It's available at console.aws.amazon.com. And you can see our services uh, uh, are running along the top of the, of the page here. So Amazon S3, our simple storage service, EC2, which I talked a bit about, and our virtual private cloud, which I'll come on to in a minute. You can see MapReduce available here. Uh, CloudFront is our content distribution network, and our relational database service here. So we have user-friendly uh, web interfaces to all of these. Uh, to get started, uh, you just click on the uh, Launch Instances button down there. Uh, after that, you get to choose uh, what type of machine image you want to start up. As you can see here, we, we support uh, a pretty wide range of OSs. Uh, so we announced support for SUSE Linux uh, the other day. We obviously support Windows. And we actually have our own uh, EC2 optimized Linux as well called uh, Amazon Linux. Uh, so you can use that. And uh, we have um, pledged to, to maintain and keep that up to date. It's a lean, mean, uh, virtualized, optimized um, uh, Linux. And you can get the source code for that, too. Uh, if I do a quick search, I can see that uh, we have a large range of machine images from our community uh, for Ubuntu, uh, for Fedora. Uh, and uh, uh, here's a, a search I did for Oracle. So here's how easy it is to spin up a new Oracle database. Uh, you can just click the Select button over there on the right-hand side, uh, and we'll spin up a new virtual machine, uh, which is a, a running Oracle database. As I say, we're, we're certified for Oracle uh, production use and also certified for Oracle support. Uh, once we've selected our machine image, um, we get to decide, as I said earlier, uh, which physical hardware we want that machine image to run on. Uh, so you can see here the number of cores uh, and the amount of memory that's available in, in our family of instance sizes. Uh, just select that from the drop down. Uh, we also offer 32 and 64 bit uh, machine images, so you get to choose which one you want. Um, from there, I set up some security key pairs so that I can log in if I want to. Uh, and I set up security groups. Uh, so all of our instances by default uh, have a default deny full um, firewall in place, actually implemented in the hypervisor of the virtual machine. Um, 
but that is under complete control of uh, of you guys. It's under touch control, and you can open up any port that you want, uh, either to the full internet, or you can restrict it by individual IP ranges or individual physical IP addresses, uh, and you can group these together. So here I'm opening up a, a, a sort of typical web sphere uh, firewall. You can see I've got SSH open, so I can log in and administer my server. I've got HTTP and HTTPS ports open, and they're open to all of the internet. And it looks like I want to run a MySQL database on there as well, so I've opened up the typical MySQL database. Too. Um, you can configure these, open any ports that you want, group them as a security group, and then you can grant additional um, ports uh, and uh, firewall rules based on those groups. So it's a nice way to specify roles uh, to your individual servers and gives you very, very tight control of what ports are available for what group and, of course, for what users after that. So this is all under customer control and it's all available via the API. This is just a nice uh, web front end to it. So once I've done that, uh, I just click Run and uh, we're taken to the list of EC2 instances. Uh, you can see that I've got one server here, uh, which is now up and running. You can see the status there says pending. Uh, I've launched it on a, a large instance type. Uh, and after a couple of seconds, uh, that will typically change uh, to running. Uh, once that's available, uh, I get a public uh, IP and domain name that I can use to log in, administer, or access my server. So it's really, really, uh, really easy to get up and running. Uh, you can fire up a new server in just a couple of clicks. And with the free tier, um, then it's just uh, there's, we're trying to reduce the barrier as much as possible uh, for people to get up and running with it. So that's a, that's a sort of guide, high-level overview to EC2. I hope it gives you a flavor uh, for what you can do with EC2. And I just want to touch now quickly uh, on our security, uh, uh, and the security of EC2 and the, our cloud in general. Uh, now, security is very, very important uh, to Amazon in general. Um, obviously, being an e-commerce uh, company, we've got a lot of experience in dealing with personal and sensitive information. And all of the tools that we use internally to secure uh, our infrastructure are available to you uh, on Amazon EC2 and Amazon S3 as well. So the first thing to talk about with this uh, is that we operate a shared responsibility model. So that means that uh, we take responsibility uh, for basically everything from the foundations of our data centers, all the physical data centers, all of our operational planning, uh, our internal management lines uh, and um, security objectives internally. Basically, everything up to the hypervisor of our virtual machine falls under our responsibility in terms of security. Beyond that, in terms of application security, data security, and encryption, uh, that is the responsibility of, of our customers. Uh, so the responsibility of uh, your application um, and the security of your application, or whether your data is encrypted at the right level, uh, comes under your responsibility. So we want to be very clear early on that that responsibility is in place. Um, the cloud and EC2 are not a magic bullet for security. Uh, we typically find that um, security uh, is, is extraordinarily well implemented and typically higher than um, physical data centers uh, that you might run yourselves. Um, but we do offer this shared responsibility model. We take physical security very sim very seriously. Uh, all our data centers are in uh, plain looking buildings and their locations are secret. Um, we have uh, tight certification and tight auditing rules. Uh, so we're now certified at ISO 27001 uh, and SAS 70 type two. Um, and we are internally and externally audited uh, for all of these certifications. Um, we have requirement-based access to our physical infrastructure. Uh, that means that nobody can get near, anywhere near uh, our physical servers or our physical disks without having a need. Uh, that requirement is logged internally, audited internally, and audited externally as well. And that's what leads us to be able to certify at such a high level. Security groups in terms of network security I've talked about. And that gives you the tool to uh, work with uh, network security best practice. Uh, and we also have tight levels of data access control. So with S3, uh, you can really restrict down whether a single piece of data uh, is available to a single individual, whether it's available to a group of IP ranges, uh, whether you have uh, access for a particular set amount of time, or whether it's accessible uh, to everybody, uh, uh, as you might do if you're distributing video or photos or something like that. 
we have type identity and access management, so you can specify roles.